I don't know who decided to get pop tarts for the office. That was a bad idea. Hello, wonderful people. How are you today? Hope you're doing well. Uh, we are going to be continuing our coverage of the Trimble X7, and we've gone to the field, we've been trained, and now we have processed some data and we have some things to say. So now, I just need to go find my brother because he's the one that really has a lot of the things to say because he did most of the processing because I'm lazy. I'll be right back. Hey, fat bar, get in here. Does this light make my head shine? You exhaust me. Eddie, the time has come for a Q&A. Question number one, how many scans did we do? Total? Total scans. 57. Good, gold star. 12 at the one side, 45 the other. Okay, all right. Uh, how much data was that? Uh, that was, I think we're seeing 12 gigs at first site-ish, 40 gigs-ish at the second site, depending on file format. Okay. The recap files seem to be a little heavier than the native Trimble format. Okay. Which makes some sense. All right. How much time did it take us to capture all of that data while we were there? About, I'm going to say two hours, three hours at the first site, and that was really fumbling around while training and talking. The second site was probably, I will call it a six and a half hour day. Like we had a solid hour for lunch, mm -hmm. got there late. So we're talking like nine to four. Okay. So with not that hour, bad. With an hour for lunch. Yeah, not that bad. All right. Um, what software did we use? So we, we scanned, we came back. What software did we put all of these files into to basically just clean everything up? The same software that was on the tablet, that's FieldLink. Okay. Uh, it is Trimble's software that, that goes with the tablet that comes with the X7. Got it. How much time did it take you to process said data? Processing took a while. The first two days were weekend where I was playing with buttons. Um, it would take hours to like colorize and refine things. Um, when Monday came around and Steve got here and mm -hmm. started helping out, then hours turned into much less time. And when I got on a stronger machine, not the tablet, like my desktop had an occurrence with field link on it, that really brought the time down. So, okay. you know, I mean. Well, it makes some sense. Hard, hard to say because I feel like there was a lot of fumbling, but there were a lot of things that I was like spending time, like anything, just trying to find buttons and couldn't find them. And then Steve comes in, he's like, click, click, oh, yeah. click. Yeah, it's here right you here. go. Okay. it's. Everything's linked up, let's refine it, and we're, we're good. So I don't want to make it sound like a really simplistic because we're, it's almost a big data problem. Mm -hmm. Files are pretty heavy. Yeah. That, I mean, that would be one con that I would see to doing this is that files are huge. That's scanning. It's like it's a, scanning. Yeah. It's, it's like taking pictures and storing them on steroids because mm -hmm. it's like 3D pictures only, they're not really 3D pictures, they're 3D pictures that have millions, like literally millions of points back. We also, we also had a pharaoh out there on site with us. Yes. Okay, so that was uh, Jun Shen uh, from Auburn Building Sciences. Right. And he was out and about shooting the whole thing. How much time did it take him to get this done? Yeah, he beat us. He beat us. But he was very head down, mm -hmm. I will say that. He scanned more though, so he accomplished, I wanna say uh, 50 plus scans. The data he collected was a little heavier. Um, he might've been sitting around between 40 and 50 gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, and it took him 45 minutes less, I'll say, mm -hmm. than us. Like he walked off the site maybe 45 minutes to an hour before we did. Yeah. Worth noting though, is that Junshan was also, he has been scanning 
with that specific scanner for about three years or, or you know variations of the pharaoh and he's been scanning for about three years we had been scanning for two days two well, whole two whole days <laughs> one, one day that was our second yeah that was our second day and that yeah. wasn't even one whole day that was actually two hours so right. that was actually us by ourselves with two hours of experience mm -hmm. so he did beat us but he was also very head down, like you had said, yeah. and he was also, you know, he was used to using that system. So he was very, very efficient at everything that he did. Whereas with us, we were kind of talking a lot with the other people around us. We had Charles and Gordon there with us, and we were talking to them and cutting up with them like the whole time. Yeah. So, I mean, it had to be snakes. <laughs> he did finish quicker than us, but also, we were jaw jacking a heck of a lot more than he was. But all in all, I think it was pretty interesting to see that, yeah, he did capture more than us, and he was there about 45 minutes less than we were. I mean, more from a data standpoint, mm -hmm. because yeah, some of it is how diligent were you to make sure that the scans were having a very fast succession to one another. Like, as soon as this one's done, move it, do it again. Have a plan for where you're going. Where am I gonna move the scanner next to catch line of sight? So there's that part, but mm -hmm. like scan duration from just a raw machine, mm -hmm. they were pacing. Yeah. I think the Pharaoh may have been a couple of seconds faster on his scan duration, but there were almost like presets on the tremble where mm -hmm. it was like, you want low, medium, high was mm -hmm. more the settings. Like the Pharaoh was more on a gradient. Mm -hmm. Like more, think of almost like buttons versus a slider. Yeah. And so where he had his kind of dialed in at, you were looking at, I'm gonna say both were pacing at around a four minute and 30 second scan. On average. And probably average. around the same point density, around like the, the, from the standpoint of capture, I don't know that there's anything that's like mind blowingly different about a ferro point or a tremble point. It's, yeah. it's a point space. Yeah. So not much of a difference from a, from the standpoint of you know, data capture, amount of time spent scanning, not really much to mention there as far as like, hey, this is different than that. They're, they're pretty close together when it, when you really look at them yeah. and you kind of average it out. When the machine's functioning, yes, the, the difference was how do I interact with this thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jim Shen had a laptop off to the side. He did, yeah. So there was like this whole tethering he had to do there in order to get the laptop. And, and it was registering. And, and he could register there, do the Bluetooth, and that's, that's really cool. It's very similar yeah. to the tablet. The thing about the Trimble is that they package it well. Mm -hmm. And they give you that tablet with FieldLink on it as mm -hmm. a part of the deal, yeah. right? And, and so registration is happening right there. The tablet is just a really good user experience experience add. I almost wish that Pharaoh would add that to their lineup as well and say, hey, you know, here's a tablet to come with it. Yeah, you can use your laptop, fine, whatever. That was just one of those user experience things that I would comment on is that I almost wish that Pharaoh would do that. Trimble, bonus points to you guys for putting the tablet there. Um, that, that seems like a really good move. Instead of having a user interface on the side of the scanner, put it down in your hands. And then you'll hear us on the other videos talk about how, you know, if you really want to use it, hey, Tyler, you know, you, you want to start the scanner? It was like, yeah, yeah. come hit start. Um, they made it very apparent how to get to things and put it on a tablet that made it very accessible. So much so that, hey, I, I had it um, with my four-year-old son. Mm -hmm. And he was navigating it. Like he had a fighting shot at knowing kind of where things were, pulling and pushing the model yeah. around and... Um, yeah, the fact that a four-year-old could use it was really a good testament to the kind of the user experience and the UI layout and everything. The X7 didn't come out too long before like the whole COVID pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about the fact that somebody's been using a Faro for three years, I mean, the age of the device is yeah. something you should probably consider too. Yeah. And I don't know what Faro has coming out. I don't know what Leica has coming out. And those companies may have some things on the horizon that are gonna be very cool. This particular realm of tech is growing by leaps and bounds. Let's let's pull back over to FieldLink real quick because what you just said I think is a really good point is that FieldLink is made more for mobile than it is really for desktop. 
Yeah. It looks like a mobile interface versus, you know, what you're going to get. Yeah, the, like the whole, um, I'm going to go look for file on the upper left, file open. It, like, this is a tablet-based um, UI. Mm -hmm. And it when you put it on the desktop, doesn't really leave that UI. You're still dealing with a tablet UI. It feels a lot like the Windows 8 thing. Mm -hmm. Looks the same on the tablet as it does on the desktop. Doesn't really change up a which lot. Isn't, which isn't all bad. Yeah. Like it, it isn't all bad, especially if you're not that technically inclined. It, it can be nice that there's not stuff moving around on you, so you know where to click your buttons. Yeah, well, yeah. once I get used to that interface, I don't, I'm not like hopping between two different instances or two different types of that software where I've got, you know, tablet mode and PC mode. It looks about the same. Yeah. All right. So we kind of went through a little bit of the processing. So like any final notes on that, on, on the processing side of things, what would you say? Anything you would change? Anything that you liked? Just kind of gives our final, final notes on this. Yeah, I like that when we left the site, we felt pretty good about what we had. We knew that things were registered together and we kind of knew that they were linked together and we were already interacting with them on the tablet before we ever left. So when we got home, yeah, there was processing that had to happen and refining and colorization, which are more just like computer processing things than they are like manual, like I have my hands in a software type of processing yeah, task. Yeah. That got high marks from me, being a novice and new user and having to get in there and do something for the first time. Processing is dealing with big data. And so dealing with that big data is gonna take a second and you're not shrinking the data by going and jumping to some other scanner. Like, they're all shooting millions of points and that takes up space. Yeah. They're all capturing a bunch of pictures and that takes up space too. Mm -hmm. You can just expect that as a part of this if you're going to adopt some sort of scanning process for your company, whatever that use case is. You need, you need hard drive space. All right. Well, Eddie, uh, you can leave. All right, well, I wasn't here. Okay, all right. I wasn't here early, so. Um, I'm not gonna get my feelings hurt by that. Yeah. You can you can leave. You mean like leave now? Yeah, I've, 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 that's all I need. This is part of the show where you dog on me. I feel it. But it's leave that way. Okay. All right guys, well hopefully this video series has been helpful for you. As always, if you have any questions about what we did or any of the processes that we had to go through whenever we got back to the office, go ahead and comment down below. We'll try our best to answer those. A special thanks to Bailey Harris for inviting us down there and letting us explore the building down in Alabama. That was a lot of fun, not gonna lie. And also thank you to the Building Point Southeast crew for letting us borrow the Trimble X7 and go out there and put it through its paces. We really appreciate you guys. Make sure if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe uh, for more content like this. Let us know what you think. Hope you guys have a great week. Go build something awesome. Catch you later.